from Single Malt, how are ya? Uh, well, we've done a whiskey in the past called um, La Dague, you might remember it. It was from the Isle of Mull and it was a bit of a peat monster. Um, not a lot of um, not a lot of oak, I think refill American barrels. Um, but from the same house on the Isle of Mull came, comes another whiskey. Now the distillery that Ladegg's made in is actually Tobermory. Uh, if, it, if they make it with a process of peating the barley, then it becomes Ladegg. If they leave it as an, or they use an unpeated barley, then the whiskey they make is a Tobermory. So, um, if you remember the Ladeg and if you would like to try that one to compare and contrast, just contact Brad and uh, we've got a few bottles of that left. But we, we're looking today at the Tobermory. Now, this is the 15 year old. It's quite an expensive whiskey um, and you might wonder why and might look at the packaging and think, wow, that's some pretty fancy packaging. But it really comes down to the casks. This is one of the few whiskies that are still made that are aged in Oloroso sherry casks. It's an unpeated whisky aged in Oloroso sherry casks. It's my favourite style. Um, I haven't tried this particular whisky yet and I'm looking forward to it. But um, while I appreciate the beauty of peated whiskies and the nuance of American oak, I really love... Um, the style of whiskey where that use the, the lovely rich flavors of the Oloroso cask. So I'm going into tasting this with pretty high expectation. Um, so I hope it doesn't let me down. Certainly looking at the packaging, I, I, uh, I'm enchanted. Um, Tobermory has a bit of a checkered past. It was, it was uh, first established in um, oh, 17... 98, um, and I'll tell you all about it on the box and in the packaging. Um, it's had a pretty, as I said, tumultuous past where it, it didn't, um, didn't it hasn't continued operating. In fact, it was silent from the depression in the 1930s right through until uh, 1971. So of its nearly 200 years, or it spent 40 of them rather quiet. Um, there's your box. It's beautiful, actually. Um, okay, really dark coloured bottle. Uh, the trend these days is to use a, a light coloured bottle so that you can see the colour of the whiskey in the bottle. This is a dark coloured bottle, so we really still have no idea what colour the whiskey is. It's bottled at 46.3%, um, so non-chill filtered, uh, no caramel added, pure and simple, as you would expect from the House of Burns Stewart, um, a very good traditional um, whiskey making company that believe in doing everything by hand and, and doing it in the traditional methods. So, let's have a look. Excited. Oh, it doesn't want to give up the cork. Nice sound. This comes from the Isle of Mull. Uh, the Isle of Mull makes it an island whisky. It's on the west coast of Scotland, not far from um, Isla. Um, however, because of the tumultuous past of the, the whisky, it was uh, the barrel house has actually been shifted to the mainland. So. It spends uh, about 14 of its 15 years in warehousing in the mainland and then comes back over to the island for its final maturation on the island. Now let's have a look at this cut. Oh boy, so that's quite rich. Um, so you can really see that that's got that lovely rich brown Oloroso sherry colour. It's a very bronzy. Um, it doesn't have that straw colour of the American ex-bourbon barrel oak and um, yeah it's a really lovely bronzy golden colour 
It's a very heavily oaked by the look of that, or it might be a first fill. So there's still a bit of colour coming out from the, sh the residual sherry flavours. Let's have a nose. Right, very prominently sherry. So all the things you'd expect to find in a sherry cask um, whiskey. The rich Christmas cake, chocolate, some coffee. Mm, yeah, all the dried fruits like prunes and plums and um, oh, dried oranges, dried orange peel. Oh, yum. Mm. Oh, it's really, really wetting my, lip, my, my lips. I can't wait to try it. Mm. Well, it doesn't disappoint on the palate. Bang, punch, face, straight in the face. Lots of really rich, intense fruit. Mm, okay, so now the secondary flavours are coming through. It's more of a, a burnt caramel, um, uh, citrusy, mm, really quite citrusy actually. Lemon and lime uh, and orange. Oh, lovely. Yeah. And then there's like a, a smokiness coming through on the back. And it's, it must be a smokiness. Not, it's definitely not a peachiness, but more of a smokiness. Um, and a saltiness coming through as well. So the saltiness is minor. It's not what you tend to get from the island, the true island whiskies. But it's definitely there. Uh, a saltiness, mm. and it's enchanting. It's a lovely whiskey. Oh. oh, oh, I love that. Oh, wow! Look, I've seen and heard some very different reviews on this whiskey. Um, it was the uh, whiskey, what was it? Whiskey Life, Sp Whiskey Life and Spirits World Whiskey of the Year in 2011. And then other people have panned it saying it's too one dimensional, but it's not one dimensional at all. You get the really rich, intense, upfront fruit intensity, yes, but after that. You get these lovely secondary flavours, layers and layers of flavour, of caramel and citrus, and they come through, and I'm still enjoying the flavour of them now. I Look, this is a great whiskey, no doubt about it. Um, I think it's definitely worth the additional money because it is such a rarity, and there are so, so few true whiskies out there aged in Oloroso Sherry. Uh, and it's beautiful. Anyway, if you like the big peaty ones, you should try this because it is the opposite end of the spectrum. And if you like other whiskies that I've reviewed that have some sherry, really recommend you try this because it's one of the best I've tried. One of the best examples um, of a beautiful sherry oak finished single malt whiskey. So. I hope you love it. I do. And I'm going to really enjoy the rest of this. Take care.